Good morning, welcome back to the shop. Well, we finally got it all painted. The big part of the lathe has got two coats of paint on it and I really like it. It's, um, I'm really impressed with that paint too. Uh, it goes on very, very well. It covers really, really good and it dries fairly well as long as you don't put on too much, which is what happened to the uh, tailstock cover. I put too much on it and it wrinkled up in between coats. I knew better. so. We put the old citrus strip on it, and matter of fact, it's sitting in the part soaker right now. So I wanted, I didn't want to take it out until I could film it. So um, I'm gonna take it out and let you all see what it looks like. Um, hopefully it, it turned out really, really good. Um, I'm hesitant to show a lot of close-up stuff because I use a DSLR camera and um, they're big. And uh, the tripod that it mounts on is big. Right now I just have it sitting on a shelf across the shop. So. Um, but I went ahead and broke down and I finally ordered a uh, action camera, a GoPro or an offshoot of a GoPro. Um, it's supposed to shoot in 4K, so it ought to allow me to, even in video post, I can uh, crop it down if I needed to go even tighter and not use any, lose any resolution. So I went ahead and bought one of those. It should be here in a few days and um, I can make mounts and all that kind of stuff and get it close to the action. I still love the way the DSLR looks. There's just, you know, the quality that you get from these is, you know, no fish eye and, you know, what, what you see in the viewfinder is what you get in the video. It, the main reason I bought this camera, um, I don't even know how many years ago, was, before, was for video. Um, I do some ham radio stuff and uh, a lot of people were interested in uh, uh, a Yagi antenna that I built. So uh, I filmed it and put it on uh, Ham Nation's Twit TV. So I bought that camera mainly to do that kind of stuff and um, I've used it through the years and really, really love it. I need to get a different lens so I don't have to put the camera across the shop. So this uh, 50 millimeter really, really looks good on camera, but I need to buy probably something down in the 18s or 20 millimeters. Anyway, that's enough of that. The lathe, um, everything looks really, really good on it. We took the motor cover off. Um, let me move this tripod out of the way. That's another thing, this thing's not light, so. <laughs> You know, it's, it's made for video and it works very, very well. It's a fluid head um, for action and stuff, but for just setting it up somewhere, probably not the best one. But I got the motor cover off. It's the one that was soaking in the uh, parts washer last weekend. So we took it off. We've got it all cleaned up. It came out greaseless. Absolutely no grease on it whatsoever. You could wipe it off. Anything that was on it easily rinsed off. So. We did that and we painted it yesterday so it's ready to be put back on. Um, it's still a little wet on the ridges, but you know, other than that, I painted it last night probably six o'clock. So, you know, for it to dry that fast, I'm thoroughly happy with it. This is from the new gallon of paint and I wanted to make daggone sure that the paint matched or else we were gonna re have to repaint the whole thing again. And I really didn't wanna do that. So, what we're gonna do today, we're gonna take the headstock cover out of the parts washer we're gonna rinse it off, see how it looks, um, see if it got all the paint off of it, um, and we're going to get it cleaned up and ready to paint. Um, we're gonna take a bunch of the handles and the small parts. I built a basket, let me get a little basket here for you just to look at. I don't have a big basket yet because we're gonna make it out of expanded metal, but I went back to my days in my childhood when my dad had us building uh, rabbit cages. So I went and got some hardware cloth, some half inch hardware cloth, and the J clips that you use to build little pet, or uh, we used them to build rabbit hutches back in the day. This was way back when I lived in Texas. But I just made a parts basket, so we can just drop that into the parts washer, you know, agitate it as we need to. And um, we're gonna put the handles, you know, we're gonna do it in batches, so. We're gonna get all the parts that will go in here from the same component, because I don't want to mix up components. And then we're gonna soak those and we're gonna get them ready. Um, we're still on the crane. I have to kind of wait on um, ordering the material. Um, I work for uh, a large company and we're a union shop and we're right in the middle of union uh, contract negotiations. So, you know, during the last year of our contract or the last six months, I pretty much start saving money. So. <laughs> You never know what's gonna happen in a union shop, so times are good, but that doesn't mean it's gonna get a little worse. So we'll just wait and see 
if uh, how our contract negotiations go before I start spending more money. So, but we're going to do what we can. We're going to get all the taper attachment worked up, um, get it ready to go, get it painted and ready to be put back on. And then as soon as the crane built, the first thing that's going in is that saddle. And then uh, it's going to soak and get all cleaned up and painted. And then we can start reassembling some stuff. After the saddle gets put in there, we're going to put the gearbox in there. Um, and we, there's plenty to do, but I need to do it in an order so I can remember how this stuff goes back together. Um, what else? Oh, I bought one of those cheap Harbor Freight. I shouldn't say cheap. Inexpensive. Um, the reviews were pretty good on it. So I bought an inexpensive Harbor Freight um, buffer grinder. Buffer grinder? Buffer grinder. And um, um, got a, uh, shoot, what is the name of that stone? The um, deburring wheel. Golly. That 3M. Anyway, I got one of those, so we're going to set that up. A future project, we're going to set up a grinder bench more along the short, the 28-foot part of the shop, maybe two and a half, three feet wide by eight foot long. And I'd like to use it, you know, a heavy metal top on it, use it more for grinding and stuff like that, just so it's away from all this other, the other stuff over here. Um, so that'll be a future project. It might not be eight feet long. It might only be six feet long, but we'll, we'll see. And we'll just keep on doing little projects. Um, I can't wait to start making parts on this thing. Um, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get it going. It, my, it's taken me a lo little longer than anticipated, but, you know, never done it. But we'll see. All right. So let's get the camera set over by the parts washer, and we'll take a look at that. I'll be back. All righty. Let's go. We're back over here at the parts washer. Get some gloves on here. Because even though this is just purple power, it's still pretty caustic. So... This will be our first peek at the headstock cover that um, I didn't like the way the paint job turned out on it. So I uh, used scissor strip and stripped the paint back off and stuck it back in the part soaker. I don't know, last night about, let's say, what, about six o'clock, something like that. So, oh, here, I'll show you. This is what it looks like, you know, just regular parts washer. I'm gonna turn the air on. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Let me go turn the main shop air on, and then I'll come back and turn the air on. All right. I have the main shop air turned on. Like I said, that's how it looks. You know, it's just been soaking. It just looks like regular old purple power, dirty purple power. But when you want to agitate it, you just turn the shop air on. The problem is, is that it foams up now. So every once in a while, I'll come turn it on. And then when it's done, I'll turn it back off. So, you know, nothing fancy. It works. It foams up and then, uh, you know, I let the bubbles pop. So every hour or so while something's in here, while I'm in the shop, I'll come over here and turn it on. And it agitates the water. But let's see what this sucker looks like. I hooked a... Uh, chain to it so I can drag it out of here. Hopefully, anyway, without getting all this on me. Oh, let's swish it around a little bit. Get some of that foam off of it. Oh, it looks good. So there you go. Man, look at that. He even took all the old paint off of it. I'll, I'll come around and change camera angles, but, oh, that looks really, really good. That looks good. So, go ahead and take these out. I don't need them anymore. Wow. You know what? I'm more and more impressed with this purple power every time I use it. Crazy. Because it had, uh, it was gray, and then it was the, uh, the original paint, it had a little bit of the original paint on it, not a lot, but um, man, it did really, really good. Whoop. Might have to get a wrench out for that one. Let me get a wrench, I'll be right back. Well, let's not do it there. So, 
save these bolts and stuff. And then I made this really, really quick. Uh, this is more for the crane when it come, when we get it built. Tell you what, it did a number on that anodizing on that aluminum too. About took it right off. I just had that kind of to hang it on a shelf somewhere around here, so. But um, I made this for when we uh, get the tray made so we can lift it out with the crane. So that works pretty good. Let me get it over here into the rinse tank and then whew, I'll move the camera around. But yeah, you see how that works. Um, it does a good job. I'm impressed. So let me close this up. I think I'm going to set the camera up on the lid and push it down in here so you can see down in here. So we'll do that. I'll be right back. All right. I'll tell you what, flipping <laughs> this camera around, I'm kind of going to be glad to get that other little camera if it works as good as I, what I hope it does. Anyway, so this is the headstock cover. You know, it was the color of the machine and it took it all off. And then this is just a bucket of hot water I went and got from the house so I can clean it up. Take any of that residual purple power off. Of course, it's, you can tell by the watercolor, there's not a lot of gunk on here. I mean, the brush is fairly clean. I'm impressed, I'm impressed. I got it just sitting on some uh, half inch conduit right now. But man, the water is not coming out dirty or purple. There's some paint right there from the original. But you know, man, it, it just comes right off. Very, very impressed. I know I keep saying that, but dag on. You know, it's nice to build something, design or design something, build it, and it work exactly like you want it, or it exceeds your expectations. And uh, that parts washer has definitely exceeded my expectations, that's for sure. Now, if I can, without pinching a finger. And then I also have my trusty oh, pump up sprayer, which I haven't pumped up. So, let me pump it up right quick. I haven't got the uh, a hot water heater run out here yet. I'm kind of waiting on the crane to be put in because I really want to one of those instant hot water heaters and I want to mount it on this wall right here but I don't know exactly how much room I might have left after I put the uh, the crane in the corner and there's a piece of conduit there and that conduit runs out to the well so I really don't want to relocate it and I really don't want the hot water heater anywhere else of course I reckon I could mount it right behind the uh, parts washer or mount it down low but I think I'm gonna use one of those instant hot water heaters because of uh, um, we're not out here all the time and we don't really need the hot water. So instead of using it or having it just heat up stored water every once in a while, we'll just you know put an instant hot water heater in it and be done with it. So, there we go. Let me turn it up and rinse it. But for now, this hot water bucket and the hot water, or the, uh, this uh, pressure sprayer, or uh, we call it bug sprayer, has been working really, really good. So, I mean, all I'm doing is rinsing off the residual purple power. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, how good on camera you, this shows up, but man, it took all that crud off of there. Even cleaned up those threads for the oil fill hole. Hmm. Interesting to see on the other side. The other side, I reckon, had that like that red oxide primer. So I can't wait to flip it over here, and we'll see, see what it looks like. Oh, it's still well. There it is. You see that? So we have a little rinsing to do here. But wow, look at that. Huh. Well, I said we'd have a little scrubbing and rinsing, but shoot, that stuff's coming right off. So, we're going to get the hot water one and the stripper pad. And we're just going to go all over this thing. 
don't know what that is, if it's a red oxide primer that they primed all the inside parts. I found it, I found it sort of everywhere on the lathe. Uh, uh, not so much on the outside parts of it, but like the inside, inside the headstock cover. All the headstock gearing has that red oxide or red color primer. Uh, in between the uh, ways on the casting, and it, it's, it's all like that. So I don't, I don't know, I don't think the lathe was originally red colored because I haven't found it anywhere on the outside unless they completely stripped the outside. It's kind of weird. Um, I think Kenny said his had that red color in it too. So, but it's coming right off, that's for sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrub all this off and we'll get a good look at it. There's numbers from the mold in there. I reckon the part number or the lot number. I don't know if they did lot numbers back in the day like they do today. But uh, if you ever need in the shop, you know, you need water for rinsing purposes or something, a little old cheap old one gallon bug sprayer with hot water in it works pretty daggone good. So. Of course, a five gallon bucket with a stripper pad works really good too. I don't think there's any need to uh, do anything on the inside. I think I'm gonna spray some WD-40 on it just so the flash rust won't get it, but I don't know if there's any reason to paint it. It's gonna have oil splashed all up on it. All right, let's flip it up here. Oh, Lordy. It ain't light, that's for sure. Hold on. So, we're gonna rinse it off. Look at that. Yeah, I'm impressed with old purple power. Not gonna lie. But the little wand on the wrist sprayer, what I'm probably gonna do, I seen my wife watering flowers and they make these little, I don't know, wands. It doesn't put in any pressure, but it puts out a pretty good volume. And you can buy those little replacement, they're just green plastic with a bunch of holes like a shower nozzle. And I think I'm just gonna do that. Probably put a uh, plummet from the hot water heater that's gonna be in this corner and just bring it over and drop a little line in here. I might even get Froggy and put a uh, foot paddle um, on it to actuate it. So, I don't know, we'll see. It's me dreaming now, but. If it comes to where you're using this a lot, that foot pedal would come really, really handy. You know, because uh, even just this little trigger here, it really comes in handy. So, we're going to go in here and we're going to clean this up the best we can. Give it one last rinse. Then we're gonna blow it off with air. And uh, hopefully it dries really, really quick. It's not so humid outside, but you know how cast iron, it'll suck in the moisture. That's for daggone sure. So let me flip this back over here. And see if I can't get the rest of this water into the hole anyway. pinching my fingers yeah that looks really really good so one last rinse here you can look at the water coming off and see if it's clear if it's got any color to it and see how good you got it clean but I mean this looks really really good now I really can't wait to stick that saddle in there and really get it going all right air 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 so I already plumbed me a uh, shop air over here on a coil reel. Whoops. That's a good way to break a window. And 
And being hot water, you know, it's got the cast pretty hot. And then you, you put air on it and it dries really, really quick. Took care of that. Had to listen, heard the fire tones go off. Uh, our fire department's having their Easter uh, barbecue fundraising. And those guys are out there cooking, so I told them I'd listen up for them. But that's not us. That's a neighboring department. Tell you what, let me go. There we go. Getting ready to say, get a towel or an old piece of pig mat. But here's a towel. Get that residual up so I won't be blowing it everywhere. All I really want to do is dry it up using that air. So. So there it is, one ready to paint, stripped head cover, headstock cover. I see a little bit of rust on here. I think I will hit it with the uh, angle grinder and see if I can't get that off of there. It's just surface rust though. Probably come right off. So. I'm gonna give our first piece in the old parts washer a big old success. Um, I still think, you know, a circulating pump and all that good stuff on there is a good idea. Of course, you know, the little aerator worked really good. So, all right, I'm gonna move this over to the big bench and um, we'll get ready to paint. So let me move it over there and then I'll reset the camera back up. Oh, Lordy, heavy. All right. So we got it over here, and I'm gonna change out this for a, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, a, uh, what do you call it? One of those stripper discs. So, let me go grab one of them right quick. I bought 10 of these, you know, the box, I think it was 10 of them for 30 bucks, something like that. And um, I've probably gone through about five of them, so that, I don't think that's too bad. The, the thing that really hurts these things is, the, uh, is these edges. You get the edges with the uh, material that's on here in it, man, it, it doesn't like it. It comes right off. So I just try to stay away from those edges if I can. Other than that, it does really good. And I usually have uh, the shop air, I'm sorry, the uh, ventilation fan going. And I might turn it on if it gets a little dusty in here, but I'm going to put on a dust mask and we're going to go after it.
I believe that's good enough. I think you could spend hours cleaning up this cast stuff. But, uh, you know, that wasn't the goal. We want to get it using or usable. So I'm going to call it quits right there. Let me get me a clean rag. And we'll get some acetone. And we'll wipe that thing down. And then we'll go ahead and paint it while it's sitting there. It's a good as place as any. So let me grab the other rag that I'll wipe it down one time with that one. Get all the major crap off of it. And I think this time I'm going to put two regular coats on it instead of George's want to get it done in one coat deal. Let me get a little acetone here. Doesn't take a lot, you know. We just want to get most of the crap off of it so the paint adheres really good. So I did that on the lathe in between coats on it though. I took a scotch Brite, just you know, regular handheld scotch Brite, like you use to scuff in between coats. And I went over the whole thing. So we still may do that with this one. I'm not sure. But I'm out of chip brushes, so I'm gonna have to bust out one of the good ones. So I'm gonna need this acetone so I can clean the paintbrush out. So Let's go grab a good paintbrush. I think we're just going to dip it right out of the can here. This paint doesn't separate either. It's very, very good. This is uh, the new gallon I just had mixed. And it's Zephyr or Blue Zephyr is the color. And uh, I know it looks purple in the daggone videos, but uh, hopefully this angle. Let me take a look right quick. Yeah, it looks gray here, so hopefully it's just the angle. It's a blue-gray, but I really like it. It looked very close to the original color when I could find it, but um, the more I look into it, and if you can see some of the darker blue, it's kind of hard to see any of it in here, but um, it's darker than this is. But uh, I like the lighter blue color. And maybe it's just, you know, because it doesn't have all the oil and the crap on it from, uh, you know, 75 years of use. But I'm just going to, I'm going to definitely paint this one on a little thinner than I did the last one. I pretty, I laid it to it last time and they didn't like it. So it blistered up on me. Now, whether it was because we had a humidity swing or or you know usually when it does that the bottom layer is curing or the it at while the top one's on there too so one's shrinking while the other one's trying to get in there <laughs> well you know either way it's my error so we're going to take our time with this one because this is part you know one of the main parts you see if it would have happened anywhere i wish it would have happened inside the chip tray chip pan but it didn't and I like to spend all day out here, but like I said, our fire department is doing its uh, Easter barbecue fundraiser. And um, I'm going to go out there and help them guys as soon as I get this done on here. So I might take a couple pictures of that and show it to you all. But, um, you know, most of us machinists, home shop guys enjoy a little bit of meat cooked on open fire. So. We have some pits that were built, oh man, years ago. And I have a huge firebox that drops the hot coals into the bottom and we shovel the, shovel the hot coals into underneath the uh, pork while it's cooking. And we flip it every half an hour or so, or they do. And um, it's really, really good. Really, really good. I like smoked meat, but um, as I get older, my stomach doesn't like it. So um, I kind of like the pit cook better i like the way the the drippings from now i'm getting hungry the drippings from the pig 
drop it onto the hot coals. Makes the best smell. And uh, my whole truck smells like it now because it's been parked out there. But anyway, off subject. So we'll get this coat on here. And then we're going to start doing a bunch of the little parts. We might, if I have time today, get that Harbor Freight uh, um, buffer grinder that I bought. And we'll get it all ready to go with the... Uh, scotch Bright wheel on it, that deburn wheel that everybody uses. I've heard so many good things about it, and everybody's got one, so it's, it's got to be a good thing. I've never used one, so I reckon we'll all learn together. Of course, I might be late on the bandwagon, and everybody's even got one. So, we're going to get this on here. What else? I reckon I got to put in there. I can rebuild the uh, all the dials and stuff like that. Of course, I need to source out or get made or make um, everything I had. Or the lathe has uh, metric dials on it, so I need to change those out to inch ones. And then I need to measure. I reckon measure the screw, make sure or the uh, shoot cross slide screw and see what it actually is and um, it had the 100 so I'm assuming that it's stamped 100 millimeters so I'm assuming, assuming that it did uh, the radius travel and not the whole diameter I want to do the whole diameter and if worse comes to worse we'll just you know buy a DRO and stick on it which I really didn't want to spend that money not now anywhere not at the beginning I would want one but man one for with a six foot travel I'm sure it's not cheap. I haven't even priced one, but it might be worth it. Who knows? I'll tell you what, rinsing it with hot water, making the paint act different too. It looks like it's got heat into the part, so it's, uh, I don't want to say it's curing, but it's flowing out pretty good. So I'm just putting two light coats on it. All right, so I think we're going to call it a day there. Like I said earlier, our fire department's having its uh, Easter benefit or Easter fundraiser barbecue today. And the, we take orders and uh, sell barbecue butts, and we pit cook them on some pit cookers that the fire department owns. So I think I'm going to go hang out with those guys for a little while. But we got the headstock cover done. Um, we'll go ahead and... I reckon we're going to have to rebuild that oil pump and, or at least clean it up and get it painted <coughs> and clean up the oil filter and get it painted too. So I'll stick those into the small parts basket that we made right here and get them soaking in there. You know, as a matter of fact, I'll probably stick them in there right before I leave and then I'll be able to take them out tomorrow and get them painted because the next thing I want to do is get that oil put into headstock and go ahead and we'll button that part of it up. Then um, I'm going to put all the small parts I can that I can lift into that parts washer by myself. We'll get that done until we um, get the material and get the crane built. So that's where we're at. Um, thought I'd set the camera up at a different perspective. This is uh, at the garage door looking towards the back of the shop. So the, the front of my shop is probably two feet behind the camera. And, um, and just thought I'd give you a different angle. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to getting that little uh, um, action camera because uh, it is a pain in the butt to set this camera up every time. It takes good video though, not gonna lie. So anyway, enough chitter chatter. Um, Y'all have a great weekend, happy Easter, and um, I reckon until next time, see ya.